What's up guys, it's the start of May, which means it's time for the monthly roundup, and it's time for last month's Travel Epic. The month of April from a personal standpoint was such a good month. Patagonia was so good for me. I felt wild. I felt free. I felt the freedom that I crave in this lifestyle. The reason I do this job is to have the freedom to be doing what I want and to explore where I want to be exploring. And yeah, Patagonia was brilliant. Absolutely perfect. Part of that perfect month though is that I didn't make a lot of money this month. My travel photographer salary this month was terrible. It was low, but then again, it was enough to help me get by. So I can't really complain about it. Now, disclaimer, before I show you the income octopus, I didn't keep track of my spending this month. I was bad at it. Usually I'm really, really good at it. And somehow just with the busyness of this Patagonia trip and all that stuff, it, I just lost track after about day three. So there's no spending report coming, but there is an income report coming. Now, if you're new to this channel, every single month I break down where my income came from. I think it's really helpful for you guys. The question I get asked more than anything out in the field or in the comments is, where does the money come from? How do I afford to travel the world? And I always think it's kind of funny because you would never ask a welder how they make their money because you know the welder makes their money welding things. But a photographer, who is essentially a tradesperson, sells photos, sells their photography skills, gets asked all the time. Of course, because I'm a travel photography, there's a lot of curiosity, I think, because most people don't maybe believe that travel photographers actually exist. We're like unicorns. Travel photographers are unicorns. That's what we are. And the reality is travel photographers in 2017 don't have salaries, or maybe not totally consistent ones. It's not like when you see it on the movies and there's like a guy in an office with all these pictures up on the wall and the editor comes and we're like, we need you to go to Nepal. That doesn't happen anymore. And to be honest, I don't think it ever did. And even big companies, big magazines, they don't really work like that. They hire people on contract, they hire people on assignment basis, they hire people on retainers. But travel photographers, for the most part, are freelancers. Now, having said that, let's get into the income. This month, I'm not gonna do an income octopus draw it out for you, just I don't have that much room in this tiny little apartment here in Freiburg, Germany. So instead, I've already drawn an income octopus and it's just gonna appear around my head. In fact, I am the income octopus this month. So let's jump into the figures and forewarning, it's nothing dramatic this month. Don't laugh at me if I point the wrong direction the entire time because this is the first time I've ever tried it. I'm assuming the first leg of the Inga Octopus will be right here and that's editorial. Editorial is work you do for magazines or newspapers or any type of photography sale that's not commercial. This month I did make $200 on editorial because I had a newspaper buy the rights to use one of my images, just a tiny little image. So there's 200 bucks up there. I don't usually make a lot of editorial money these days. I don't focus on it. It's pretty time consuming doing editorial work and finding editorial work. So I really only do it if people find me. My next source of income is commercial and I only had one client for commercial this month. And it's the same client that I have like every single month for the past two years. And they've been fantastic to me. They've been really helpful. They kind of get me through months like this where I struggle a little bit with income. I'm on a retainer with them on a monthly basis. So that's where that thousand bucks come from. Some travel photography sales on a retainer basis, always nice to have. Next is stock. The stock did not do well for me at all this month. I don't know why. 
uh, it just didn't make any sales. And that's how stock goes. Stock's pretty consistent that you're always going to make 200 bucks or 300 bucks as long as you got a lot of images in. But then every now and then it can jump to like 1200 bucks like it did last month or some months like this. It's at the bottom at 200 bucks. But stock, 200 bucks. Next source of income is social. And I didn't make any money on social. What I mean by a social sale is if I have like an ad in my Instagram feed or on my Facebook page or Twitter feed or something like that. Basically a client, let's say an energy bar, hires you to take a cool picture with their energy bar and tag them into the photo. That's a social income as a travel photographer. And a lot of travel photographers make the vast majority of their money these days through those sales, especially the so-called Instagrammers. Vlog, the vlog this month made 800 bucks. Thank you guys. You guys are brilliant. Absolutely love you guys for that. It was a good month for the vlog. Uh, in the Philippines and I think that's where this income is still coming from It's the Philippines views so that was absolutely fantastic since the Philippines the vlog views have gone down like 25% but I think that's to be expected because the Philippines was such a busy um, traffic source I guess there was a lot of Filipinos that were really interested in the channel when I was there and they've kind of just dove off since leaving the Philippines but Pre-Philippines to now, the channel's still gaining steam and I love that and I love you guys for that and I love that source of income because it allows me the freedom to explore and create and that's really cool. Next source of income is the blog and that's my travel blog, brendansadventures.com, which I don't really focus on that much, but it still has remained to be a pretty residual source of income these days. Um, that's $300 from like the Google ads that appear on the bottom of articles and other little banner advertisements and things like that. Assignments, I haven't had an assignment as I mentioned in like four or five months. That's all about to change. This month here in May I have two assignments. In June I have at least one, maybe two assignments. And then in July, August I have other assignments. So the assignments are starting to pick up again, I promise. I won't be assignment free that long and I promise that there'll be some money being made, hopefully. I hope there'll be money made pretty soon. Finally, affiliates. Affiliates were good again this month. Affiliates just mean like if there's a link on my blog or on the videos that link somewhere to like Amazon and somebody clicks on that link and buys a bunch of products, I get like a tiny percentage of that sale. It's like a commission sale from a shoe salesman. And uh, that was good this month, 300 bucks. That's also been a nice little source of residual income that I'm really liking. When I talk about this month not being a great month, I think this is a great example of why the Income Octopus is so important. The Income Octopus as a travel photographer is all about trying to find different sources of income so that you're not overly reliant on one. And a lot of travel photographers are really reliant on assignments. I haven't had a good assignment in four months. And if I relied purely on assignments, I'd be in trouble financially. I'd be in a lot of trouble. But because I have these various sources of income, even on a month that I don't do a lot of work for other people and I focus just on me and my projects, I can still pull an income of $2,800 and that's fantastic. Now looking ahead to the next month or this month, I guess, May is going to be a lot of fun. I described a couple videos ago of what I've got coming. But from a financial standpoint, it's also going to be a really good month because I have two assignments. I just signed a really nice cr client with a commercial company I've worked for in the past. And I've got a couple other huge projects coming up in the summer. So $2,800 doesn't seem like a lot to you guys. It's not a lot. My bank account continues to kind of drop because I spend more than I make right now. But things are going to get better and I'm really stoked about the future. I kind of want to end this video with a little bit of advice. A lot of new travel photographers are really concerned about making money right away. And I think that's wrong. I think that in any other career, you wouldn't spend your first year or two making money. You'd spend your first year or two getting educated. If you're a welder, you'd learn how to weld. You'd do the trade school. If you're an electrician, you go to trade school. If you're a carpenter, you go to carpentry school, I guess trade school as well. If you're a doctor, you spend seven years in school learning your trade. If you're a photographer, in the first year or two, invest in education. And that doesn't necessarily mean go to school. It doesn't necessarily mean go to university. In fact, I think that university for photography is kind of a little bit of a waste of money. What I mean by educate yourself is instead of spending all your time pitching clients and chasing work, get out there in the field and learn. 
Watch YouTube tutorials, read books on photography, learn, educate yourself, spend an entire year learning photography in and out, making yourself a master of it so that when you're ready to start making money, your work is of value and people are going to want it. For the life of me, I don't really understand why with photography, unlike welding or carpentry or any other career, people think that they can just pull up a camera and start earning money. You need to educate yourselves, you need to learn the trade, and you need to invest the time and energy into the educational process of photography as a trade. That's my little bit of advice for today, and I, I guess that's it for this little talk. Tomorrow, we're back at Adventures. I think I'm going into Basel to pick up a rental car and then doing some exploring here. I'm gonna try to find some castles, gonna check out the Black Forest, and probably shoot a little bit more here in Freiburg because it's a really cool city. So I'll see you guys on tomorrow's show. Catch you later. Peace.